Hello everyone, my name is Shepard and welcome back to the Butcher Circus. Today I'm going to be showcasing the Halo Comp, which is what you see just in front of you. It's a Bounty Hunter, a Crusader, a Jester and an Arbalist. And it is widely regarded as, you know, one of the best teams in the Butcher Circus, if not the best. Now, there's a few different trinket variations you can use while playing this team. Some people put the Bounty Hunter in second, or the Bounty Hunter in first. You know, it depends on your Crusader position, right? Um, depends on what you want to do with him. I personally prefer to put the Bounty Hunter in first, even though he can't really use scout drops right away. Then I put the Crusader in second, the Jester in third, and the Arbalest in fourth. As you should always do it, right? Yeah, I do that just in case my Arbalest gets pulled. I can Holy Lance and move forward from position 3 to 2 with my Crusader and my Arbalest is back in shooting position. If you're worried that you won't be able to use Caltrops as a Bounty Hunter, then the Jester it can just solo, put him put himself to position 1 and then your bounty hunter can use his caltrops so yeah in some matchups it is worth it to just do that so yeah this these are the trinkets so on the bounty hunter you want pull chance you want uh, death blow chance and what you're mostly going to be going for at the start of the match is either using a pull on an enemy character or marking that's usually what you want to do with the Crusader, we take double stun chance, you know, the Sacred Blade, the best trinket in the game. <laughs> Not really, but it's a really good trinket. Also gives him the Virtue chance. And we are probably just gonna be stunning someone, unless we get pulled and then we have to Holy Lance, right? The problem with this Crusader is that he doesn't have a lot of accuracy buffs, so at some point in the match, we will have to use the Battle Ballad from the Jester to buff him up. So at the start of the match you usually want to go for a stunning blow, like uh, to adapt on the situation, see which character you need to stun and whatnot. Or, you know, sometimes uh, there is an option of taking Zealous Accusation instead of the Bulwark of Light, but I prefer the Bulwark of Light because it can be really, really helpful in damage matchups if you go against like something like a Grave Robber that wants to launch, like this is just gonna mitigate her damage so much, it's really good. Of course, you also take Rally to the Flame, always. It's one of the best abilities in the game, like, you can heal uh, a character and heal yourself at the same time, and that's amazing in the Butcher Circus. Also, clearing the debuffs is nice. Alright, then the Jester. At the start of the match, depending on what pace you're going to take it, um, you usually want to start with Battle Ballad, but sometimes you might have to start with Dirk Stab. So, if you're con concerned that you're either not going to be able to use Battle Ballad uh, later in the battle, or you're concerned that you might miss your abilities, then definitely go for the Battle Ballad first. Other than that, just go for the Dirk Stab early, try to get the Death Blow, try to get a character closer to Death's Door after you shoot him with the Arbalest or something. And then, you know, obviously your big goal is to use Finale on those big characters like the Flagellant and uh, the enemy Chester and whatnot. And, you know, if you get marked or if you like, if you really need to finale, then you have to solo here to just use it. I don't really like harvest because you know the bleed chance is kind of unreliable, and uh, the other abilities just feel way more dynamic. Now the arbalist, she's always going to be using these two trinkets. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot to mention trinkets on Jester. He has the monkey spawn for a bit more accuracy and dodge. You should always take this on the Jester. Like 40 dodge is just amazing. It means the enemy team has to use accuracy buffs. And using the finisher means that the Dirk Stamp can bypass guard and have a 60% chance of getting a death blow. With like very reliable accuracy because of the finisher adds a bit of like 20 accuracy to characters below 40% HP. That's not a bit of accuracy, that's like, that's a ton. Then the Arbalest always has these two trinkets, the Stabilizing Tiller and the Piercing Quarrel. This means that she can bypass guard and bypass protection. So it's just brutal like. Guards and protection are what should defeat damage teams, but she can just bypass both of them, kind of. Yeah, that's really good. You usually want to take these four trinkets on her. I mean, usually I mean every time, if you're playing this team. You will never deviate from these uh, choices. 
So yeah, without further ado, let's go into the match. Demands a challenger. So I will be trying to showcase this team. You have to keep in mind that not every match is the same. There could be, you know, different compositions. You, you pretty much have to adapt to the situation. You're not always going to mark at the start of the round, you're not always going to go for the stun, you're not always going to go for the battle bow at first. It usually depends on the situation, so hopefully we get a, a decent player here so I can showcase the team at its best. Alright, we get a champion 1 player, Sea Killer Co. something. We are in fact Darkest 1. Yeah, just flexing my rank on everyone. Okay, let's get into the match. Alright, he has some kind of DOT team with regen possibilities, also being able to pull with his shield breaker. You know, the Hammer Man is sure that he has a boss. He has a very diverse team. Uh, it looks like its goal is gonna be to just have some survivability with the Antiquarian and then just do a lot of blight all around, I would say. Okay, he starts, he gets the, the coin first, you usually want to get the coin with this team, but um, yeah, that's just the way it is. Sometimes you can't get the coin. I'm honestly inclined to pull his Antiquarian just so he doesn't get the regen. Yeah, that is in fact what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull the Antiquarian and, you know, even though he can use take cover with the Antiquarian, which is what you should always do, um... I can... this just prevents that the regening to Rejuvenating Vapors goes forward. Like, considering that I go second, the Rejuvenating Vapors would be really, really bad for me at this point. Okay, he moves forward with the Shield Breaker using Puncture on a Jester. You know, using Puncture on the Jester means I can't use the Battle Ballot yet. But it also means that I am ready to Finale soon, right? So, that Antiquarian is marked, so I'm gonna go for the Sniper Shot. I do one damage off Death's Door, and that's perfectly fine. I'm probably gonna Finale her, unless she guards. Okay, she goes for Rejuvenating Vapors. So, because of that, I'm gonna be just a touch greedy, and I'm gonna go for a Holy Lance first. And then I'm gonna go for a Dirk Stab. So the Dirk Stab has a 60% chance of killing her, and I would still get to keep the finale, and that's what I really want to do. He can go for Battlefield Medicine. Uh, heals for 6. I don't think that's enough because my finale does 6 to 11. Yep, and we just kill the Antiquarian. So you're usually not gonna use finale round 1. But, you know, it's just as I said, like, uh, sometimes matchups are unpredictable. Yeah, and like this, we just got rid of probably the main piece character of Killer Coffee's team. Yeah, this is very good. Okay, he goes for an open vein on my Bounty Hunter. I could honestly heal that bleed away, but um, I think I want my... Yeah, you know what? I'm actually gonna do that because yeah, I'm actually gonna do that. I'm gonna heal away that bleed from the open vein. I'm gonna stun his highwayman so I don't take a repost with the um, bounty hunter. And then I'm gonna uh, use Caldrops. He doesn't get to pull on my Arbalest. That is very good. You know, the Arbalest has very high base move resist, 50. I don't use the snuff on her because it doesn't really matter too much in this team. Ball isn't that bad of an ability, anyways. So we're gonna use Stunning Blow on this Hammer Man. We take the repost, but you know, Crusader, he's a tanky boy. We can take that repost. You don't want to use the Stunning Blow on a character that has two turns of repost left, because he's just gonna click off that stun and still have a repost, right? Okay. Now he goes for. A noxious blast on my bounty hunter. That's gonna do a lot of damage over time, but uh, I don't really mind it. I'm honestly inclined just to go for a finish him to do a lot of damage to that uh, higher man instead of the cow drops. Yeah, that might be a good idea. Ah, uh, we get unlucky on the rolls and we roll for like 13 in the 12 to 23. Yeah, that's just a bit unfortunate. I'm gonna go for the battle ballot, so I have reliable accuracy and I am very unlikely to miss from now on. Yeah, okay, he clicks. Um, I think that 
Oh, he has a lot of stun resist now. Okay, okay. I don't believe an Arbalist shot would be above doing 19, unless I get a really high roll or a crit. So what I am gonna do first is... I'm probably gonna stun this shield breaker. Because playing this team, you usually up a character or two. And if you can be up a character and get a stun, it's just beautiful. Let's just put it that way. Like the turn economy on, on yourself is like amazing. Okay, now we have a decent chance of killing a character. I'm gonna use Mark for death, so I have a reliable chance of one-shotting either of these characters. I'm probably gonna do it on the Highwayman. Yeah, so... I really like getting that death low resist, I'll explain soon. So the fact that we got the stun on the shield breaker means that she can't use either Impale or Adder's Kiss to put his higher man into position 1. Because you cannot shoot the character that is in position 1. Yeah, Killer Coffee here just surrenders because I was gonna shoot him to that stall and then go for a third stab with a 90% chance of getting a death blow. So it was just a 4v2. And yeah, that is a fast match and a very fast win for us, even though we got the unlucky on the coin flip and we went second, right? So yeah, let's go for another match. Hopefully we can do uh, another good match up against some player like Killer Coffee, maybe even a bit stronger. So yeah, you can just see like the absolute power of this team. It's just getting those marked shots, just doing too much damage. I, we didn't even get a crit this match, but yeah. Just doing way too much damage. Then we have the finale pressure, we have the stun pressure. There's just so much on this team that you have to worry about. It's explosive. And it's definitely one of the best choices if you want to do some kind of uh, really good team. Okay, now we see here Kiyoshi, which is my opponent, is goes first. Thing. Alright, he goes first with a team that I don't believe is like very polished out, you know, he has a lot of beginner trinkets, but let's see how this goes. Alright, instantly going for a play grenade on my Jester. Um, yeah, I have a lot of dodge. No, I don't think so. Okay, I'm gonna go for a stun on his Crusader because I don't want him to heal like one of his allies. Yeah, if you're playing a Crusader, like, don't do what he's doing. I mean, I understand that he probably played, like, the base game and he's like, Oh, Smite is an amazing ability, I'm gonna make myself a bit tankier and then try to go for more damage. But, yeah, if you're playing a Crusader, your main goal should be either to stun or to use Zealous Accusation. Because stun is just so good in this game. It's in the Butcher Circus, right? Especially as the Crusader, you still do half the damage of Smite with more accuracy, and you get a stun on top. It's just brutal. So I'm gonna pull this Antiquarian, so she cannot use Rejuvenating Vapors, and we see again another player not having to take cover. So, yeah, usually if there's like an Antiquarian, I mean, it's kind of weird because if you pull her, she can use take cover, and then you don't have a marked character to shoot. But at the same time, if you go second, you really have to do it, because the Rejuvenating Vapors is just gonna kill you. That is one of the main downsides of this team, is that you don't have a lot of DOT to counter, um, you know, to counter just, like, regen. So their characters can just click themselves out of Death's Door, like, by the start of round two, and then there is, like, they can get another action, do a lot of AoE on you, and it's not feeling too good for you, right? Impressive. Okay, I go for the sniper shot first, you know, missing out on a bit of damage and accuracy, because that gives me the chance of going for the death blow right now. And the death blow is a 60% chance, and yep, that is a kill, round one. My Chester is in position to finale, and the match is not looking too good for Kyoshi. Yeah, once again, we killed the Antiquarian round 1, I think. Yeah, the Hans Harry is, is gonna be adding up, but it might be too little too late, let's be honest here. Okay, now I'm gonna pull that uh, Plague Doctor, because she's gonna be in a very bad position if I pull her. 
uh, honestly, a decent option that uh, Kiyoshi here has is just moving forward with his Plague Doctor, so I can't do... Uh, so I can't shoot her, right? That is actually an option he has. Oh, we're gonna see him go for a smite. Does 18 damage. That is very reasonable damage, but it is not a stun. And so the Butcher Circus does not care. <laughs> Okay, once again we're gonna go for another mark shot. Thing is, like, the Arbalist is the most important character on your team, because if you lose her, you're not gonna be doing a lot of damage. So you really need to, like, f focus on keeping the Arbalist alive. That doesn't mean, like, going for a heal now, but, yeah, she's definitely an important character, just keep that in mind. And, you know, we do so much damage even without a crit, because after you crit with the Arbalist, you get more damage versus marked. So. Like, even if you didn't have enough damage with the first crit, you will definitely have more damage next round. It's just brutal how much she can, how much uh, punishment she can put out. Now, I'm gonna go for another Dirk Stab, which is once again a 60% chance, so yeah, I definitely recommend bringing the finish on the Jester. I mean, I just use it so much that I can't really imagine taking the Jester on this team without the finisher. And yeah, now we are in a 4v2, and I still have Finale. Like, this is, this is just insane. Okay, let's see how Harry is doing a bit of bleed and flight, right? Um, it's gonna take a while to kill this Crusader. Oh, if I click my Bounty Hunter now, he's gonna drop to this door, and I don't want that to happen. Oh, but I have an idea. I have an idea. If I Holy Lance with the Crusader, it means that he is unable to reach my Bounty Hunter with his own Crusader. So I can just keep him at this door and everything will be fine. So he's gonna go for a Smite on my Jester. That's probably gonna miss. Oh, no it actually doesn't. Alright, good job for you. You Smite my Jester. Um, now I think that we have two buffs on Finale, so... Two buffs on finale means that you do well a reasonable amount of damage with the finale. Actually, let's just check. Hang on. Two buffs should be like 11 to 20, I believe. Yeah, 11 to 20. So if you're playing this kind of matchup, don't go for what I did because there was a decent chance that you just didn't get the kill right there, and you know then it would have been like very weird to just get the kill right. Okay, now we're gonna click my bounty user. He's gonna drop to death's door, but we don't really care. We are gonna to finish him on this crusader. Now we just have to bring him down. I mean, he's a really tanky fella, but uh, he can't really withstand forever. And there is, like, once he drops a character on this team and there's not, like, a lot of stress pressure on you, it just means that you've won because you have two healers with the Crusader and the Arbalest, it's very difficult to lose a character as this team. So, yeah, Kiyoshi surrenders, thank you, and that is all for today on this uh, team showcase. Yeah, it is the Halo Comp, my variation, the Shepard variation, let's just put it that way. You didn't get to see it today, but if I was playing against the Stress team, Something I could have always done is, and something you can always do is just, you know, use solo, you put yourself in position 1, you gain dodge, and then the bounty hunter goes position 2 and you just count drops. You know, you saw me today using the mark for death, using the come hither, using the finish him, we didn't really use the count drops because we didn't have to, but uh, you should definitely have count drops instead of uppercut. Some people bring uppercut, but uh, I just feel like it's not that good of an ability, the damage is laughable to say the least and the bounty hunter has way more uses to him and these other abilities are just too good so yeah that's all for today thank you for watching and see you next time